Welcome. So what I want to do is show you how to find the domain of the sine and cosine function. And when dealing with domain, you know, we need to remember a function has an input value and an output value. So as long as we have a unique value that we can plug into our function and get an output value, all those values are going to be a part of our domain. Any value that we plug into a function, either we get two different values or we're not able to calculate a value, those values are not going to be a part of your domain. Or actually, if it produces two different functions, well, then that value, then your function won't even be a function. So when we're looking at graphing the sine and cosine graph, we're going to be using a lot of our points on the unit circle. And it's very important, because I'm going to kind of prove this to you guys two different ways. When looking at the unit circle, all right, we talked about the unit circle. We can keep on going around points infinite many times, right? If I was going to graph this, and that's what our point where we came to is coterminal angles. If we look at this point, let's look at pi over 4, all right? Now, if I said I wanted to find a coterminal angle, what we did is we said, well, let's look at this point, square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. So if I wanted to find, let's say, the cosine of cosine of pi over 4, well, that's going to relate to the x-coordinate of that point with the square root of 2 over 2. And then we said, you know, let's find a coterminal angle, a, an angle that has the same initial and terminal side. So what we said was, you could say, well, take pi over 4 and add 2 pi to it. Because when you add 2 pi, you come back to the exact same value. So when I add 2 pi, which would be like 8 pi over 4, what I end up getting is, um, when I add 8 pi over 4, I end up getting 9 pi over 4. And what we notice is cosine of 9 pi over 4 is still equal to the same value. All right, and so what's important is we can evaluate that, and that's important. You can, when you're finding the domain, it's okay if you plug in a number and you still get the, and you get the same point. That's okay, as long as you're not plugging in a point like pi force and you're getting two different values. So right now, both these points are still in the domain because when we plug them in, we get an output value out back. And what notice is you can keep on adding two pi. We can do this infinite many times, and we're always going to produce a solution. And guess what? This works for any point that we pick on the unit circle. Every point that we have on this unit circle, or even off of the unit circle, we can plug into our sine and cosine graph, and we're going to get an output value. And that even works for the negative value, because instead of adding 2 pi, we could also say you could subtract 2 pi. Right? So find coterminal angles means adding 2 pi or subtracting 2 pi. So right now, by looking at the unit circle, I have in my mind that the domain is all real numbers. There's not a value or a point on the unit circle that I could plug into my function and not receive a value back out of it. And, and let's go ahead and prove that by showing what our graph looks like. So let's look at the sine graph and the cosine graph. And I think it's sometimes confusing for students because when showing them how to graph, we like to just kind of focus on our initial period, meaning the first initial period between 0 and 2 pi. So we know that the graph reaches a maximum height and a minimum height of negative 1, which we talk about in the range. And then we say the sine graph, 1, 2, 3, 4, starts at 0, goes up, goes down, goes down, goes up, max. Cosine 1, 2, 3, 4, goes down, goes up. There you go. OK. And a lot of times we know we say, hey, these graphs go on and on and on forever. They go in the positive and the negative direction. So what that means is if you were to continue these graphs, right, do, 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 off the screen, these graphs keep on repeating themselves over and over and over and over again. And you think about these. These all, all these points are here on the x-axis, meaning it doesn't matter no matter what point I pick on the x-axis, I'm always going to have a point on my function. No matter what point I pick, infinite to, um, to infinity to negative infinity, I'm always going to have a point on my graph that has an x and a y coordinate, an input and an output value. So therefore, we can write the domain of our sine and cosine graph is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, or you could say negative infinity less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to infinity, or you can also you know, just write all real numbers. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the domain of sine and cosine. Thanks.